one aspect of merchandise that I haven't really gone into too much detail in the past with is its relation to lost media. There's actually quite a bit of notable merchandise that has gotten lost over the years. May it be cancelled products, products so rare that barely any images of them exist, or in this case, products that are so impossible to find that they are simply rumor. Especially with older merchandise lines, it's very common for them to have poor documentation, and that's the case with the set we'll be looking at today. Super Mario RPG was released for the Super Nintendo on March 9th, 1996. The game was noteworthy as it was, as the name suggests, Mario's first ever RPG. The game was a success when it came out, but one thing not many people know is that it got a lot of merchandise. As odd as it is for this seemingly risky Mario spin-off title to get such a marketing push, it did. From keychains, to playsets, to socks, tons of products bearing the Mario RPG brand were made during the game's release. But one set of Mario RPG merchandise stands above the rest. Rest. One set that's so hard to find, so coveted, it's become that of legend. Of course, I'm talking about the set of Mario RPG plushes. And with that said, welcome to a look back at the Takara Super Mario RPG plushes. This set was released by Takara in 1997 as promotion for the game's Super Mario RPG. The set contains Mario, Yoshi, a mushroom, a star, Boshi, and, uh, hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay, look. One of the main draws to this set, for many people, is the mystery surrounding it. We don't actually know how many plushes there are to this set. Why? Well, for a number of unfortunate reasons. The main thing, though, is that we don't have an official set image for this set. The promotional pictures that showcase all the plushes in a set that were often used during this era? Yeah, we don't have one of these for this set. For example, check out this set image for the Ban Presto Super Mario 64 plush set that I've looked at in the past. Not only is this image super cool, but it also also tells us how many characters were in the set, which is very useful. These Mario RPG plushes don't have any archived images like that. I know there's gotta be one out there, we just don't have it archived. And you may be thinking, oh, just check the paper tags that came attached to the plushes. I'm sure those have all the info you need, right? Well, they probably would, but this set never had paper tags. The plushes had touch tags, and heck, they even had gold hang strings, but no paper tags. This isn't completely uncommon. For example, this Ocarina of Time plush set also made by Takara don't have paper tags. Now, along with the five confirmed plushes to the set, there seems to be a sixth, Mallow. However, he has only shown up for sale twice. Ever since this set came out, there have only been two documented times this guy has shown up for sale. Not only that, but pictures of even the confirmed to exist plushes are hard to find. Try looking up pictures of the Mario plush, and you won't find much. I think that's all the background history we need for now. I'll delve more into the mystery aspect of the set later, but for now, I think it's time to start looking at the plushes themselves, starting with Mario. Here's the Mario plush in the set. To start off, I have to say my favorite aspect of these plushes is just how accurate they look to the characters in the game. Super Mario RPG has a very distinct style to it, given the limitations of 3D at the time. And when it comes to how the characters look, this set nailed that. Mario's proportions and overall design look to be a near-perfect replica of his in-game appearance. In the game, Mario had a very short and stocky look, which this plush captures perfectly. Mario's body is very round, his legs and arms are very short, his face looks very plump, and the proportions on this guy look entirely game accurate. Another thing I should mention is the different fabrics used to make these plushes. For example, Mario Mario's hat uses a much shinier fabric than what is used on the rest of the plush. Speaking of Mario's hat, it looks very nice. It's sized well and the M emblem is captured perfectly, with the white and M pieces being separated from the rest of the hat. The rim of Mario's hat is also expertly captured, with a very distinct curve to it. Mario's face looks great. His eyes and eyebrows are made of an overlay material, but everything else is well defined. His mustache, surprisingly, isn't an overlay. It's a separate piece, and you can see the ends of it coming off the plush slightly. His nose is correctly large, as are his eyes. Mario's hair is also very simplified, especially in the back, but it looks fine. Mario's body is very short and round. His overalls aren't layered or anything like we see on newer plushes. They have a simple design to them, but they still look great. And his buttons are made of felt. These could have easily been overlays, but they went the extra mile here. The back of Mario's overalls are cut off too, another detail uncommon with relatively early Mario plushes like this. Mario's touch tag is attached here, to the back of his leg. The touch tag is important as it gives us all the info on the set we have to 
to go by. It's full of legal information, tells us these are RPG plushes, and that Takara made them. Since these plushes don't have paper tags, these are all we've got. Anyway, Mario's gloves are perfect. They're the correct size and his fingers are all there. His glove cuffs, while unstuffed, look fine as well. His shoes are a flat brown color but are sized well and have sole details. Overall, this Mario plush I'd say is important not only because it's accurate to the game it's based off of, but because this is one of the earliest Mario plushes to look this accurate. There are a lot of charming early Mario plushes, but a lot of them look weird by today's standards. They have style to them, which is great, but few captured that perfect Mario look. This one, for the time it was released in at least, did, which is very commemorable. Now, how rare is this Mario plush? The answer to that question and really the rarity for all of these plushes is pretty hard to find. A lot of these guys haven't been sold in a long time. They rarely show up for sale, but when they do, it's usually for an extreme premium. The last Mario I saw sold for over $200 on Yahoo Japan auctions, but I know even that is probably lowballing this guy's value. And given how infrequent these guys show up, I'd rather not waste time analyzing how much they could sell for, and instead simply say they're just worth a lot of money. Some may argue this is the rarest set of commercially released Mario plushes, and apart from a few potential contenders, I agree with that. You never see these guys for sale, and it's always an event whenever they do show up because they're just that rare. Here's the Yoshi in the set. Just like the Mario, this Yoshi just screams Mario RPG. Compare the plush to a render of Yoshi from the game, and yeah, it looks just like it. Also, this plush gives off the look of Yoshi's classic design in general. Compare it to any recent plush of the character and you can instantly tell what time frame it came from. This is just a perfect classic Yoshi plush. His stance is closer to how Yoshi tended to stand back in the day, and his body looks a lot longer. Yoshi's face looks great, his entire face is very well patterned, and his eyes are made of plastic. He even has nostril details, which are represented by stitching. Yoshi's touch tag is attached to the bottom of his tail as you can see here. Yoshi's body is long but also pretty wide, as can clearly be seen by his shell or saddle, which is much larger than how we're used to seeing it today. Another difference in Yoshi's design compared to today is that he has four spikes here, as opposed to modern Yoshi's three spikes. His arms are great, they're bent a little forward and are again and well stuffed. His hands have stitching to indicate his fingers too, which is a detail they could have easily skipped. Yoshi's legs look very nice as do his shoes. His shoes are made from the same shiny material as Mario's hat, and he even has the correct sole details. These look very nice. Yoshi's tail looks excellent and has the proper curve it should, with the end of it pointing upwards. This Yoshi is without a doubt the best classic Yoshi plush, in terms of accuracy at least. It probably would have been my favorite confirmed plush in the set, if not for the next plush we'll be looking at, Boshi. Alright, now we're talking, check this guy out, an official plush of Boshi. This Boshi plush encompasses everything I love about old UFO Catcher plush sets, in terms of character choices. A lot of UFO Catcher sets such as this were based off of specific games, and as such had game-specific characters, like Boshi. This is without a doubt probably the only Boshi plush that will ever exist. There's a 99% chance we will never see another piece of Boshi merchandise released period. No plush, no figure, nothing. And to top it all off, this plush is a near-perfect recreation of the character. For starters, it's a little strange Takara would even make this guy. It seems more important characters such as Peach or Bowser didn't get plushes, but Boshi did? It's a little strange at first glance, but when you think about it, it makes sense. Takara already had a Yoshi pattern made. They could easily add and change a few details to make Boshi, who is essentially just a cooler Yoshi, so he's a guaranteed success anyway. They could easily make a plush of him, with little risk despite him being such an unknown character character. With that said, this plush does share the same general pattern and structure as the Yoshi. He just has a lot of added details like his sunglasses, which are cut pieces of felt, his spiked collar, his fangs, and his spiked shoes. His shoes are no longer shiny, but I'd say the spikes make up for that. His body is this nice cool shade of blue, and his spikes are now more orange than they were on the Yoshi plush. Apart from that, he's basically the same as Yoshi, but that's fine because that's just who Boshi is. I'm so glad this plush exists. Even if it is nearly impossible to come across, we could have just gotten no Boshi plush at all. But this guy exists, and that is so cool to me. Like I said, this will most likely go down as the only plush of this character that will ever exist. There's absolutely no way that, first off, a merchandise company would even think to make Boshi. But even if they did, I'm sure there's tons of legal issues preventing the creation of new merchandise of the character. The only way a new Boshi plush would ever be made is if a new bootleg plush of 
of him came out. Sort of like those fake dry and dark Bowser plushes. But that would be horrible because then tons of people would buy it because it's Boshi supporting bootleggers. With that said, all of that makes this plush even more special. It's truly one of a kind, and if this plush didn't exist, there would be no Boshi plush. That's probably one of my favorite aspects to these old merchandise lines. They're total products of their time, and because of that, they often feature elements of franchises that aren't relevant anymore, such as forgotten characters that we will never see new merchandise of. And for the record, as time moves on, a lot of unique UFO catcher plushes will have modern interpretations. For example, for over 20 years, the Sonic the Fighter's Super Sonic plush was the only plush of Super Sonic's classic design. But now, in 2018, Tomy made a new classic Super Sonic plush. Same thing happened with Jax and their Metal Mario plush, making the Band Presto one not as special. But that will never be the case with Boshi. This will forever be the only plush of the character, and that makes it insanely cool. When it comes to this set, a lot of the characters are very interesting and unique and as such are highly desired. That's not necessarily the case with the next two plushes we'll be looking at. To flesh out the set a little more, Takara included these, a plush of a super mushroom and a star. These two plushes are very basic when compared to the other plushes in the set, and aren't really all that noteworthy relative to the rest of the set. To be fair, they still capture that distinct look of the items that they had in Mario RPG. Compared to current incarnations, the mushroom's face looks quite different, and its spots aren't as uniform compared to what we see today. The star is a lot more basic and is without a doubt the most generic plush in the set, but it still looks just like how stars look in the game, and I suppose that is still pretty noteworthy. But in a set with characters like Boshi, a mushroom and star aren't really that special, but they probably weren't meant to be. I imagine Takara felt the set needed a few more plushes, and while it would have been really cool to see characters like Peach or Bowser get plushes, maybe that wasn't seen as financially viable given how complicated plushes of those characters would have been, especially considering how complicated some of the characters in the set already are. So instead, they made these two, which are still appealing and people would still want to get them, but they're significantly simpler. I actually had no idea the star plush even existed until way after I first found out about the set. People just don't really talk about these two all that much, and they get lost in the hype surrounding the other characters. I still like them, and I'm glad they exist. They look accurate, plus it's always cool to have some items to go with a Mario set. <laughs> There are quite a few Mario plush sets that have garnered very strong followings over the years. For example, the Sine Mario Party 5 plushes, the Kelly Toy Mario plushes, the Ban Presto Mario 64 plushes, etc. Something that's consistent about all of those examples is that, and this may sound a little strange, but they're all documented. We know all of those plushes exist, we know exactly how many plushes are in each set, etc. As I've made clear, that is not the case with this set. Yes, it's time we talk about the mystery history of the Mallow plush and the potential case of the Geno plush. However, with a set as mysterious as this one, I think there might be someone out there more suited to talk about this set than me, and I think I know just the guy for the job. The mystery of the Mallow and Geno plush is something nearly as old as the online video game collecting scene itself. Given the elusive status even the confirmed plushes have in this set, and the lack of concrete evidence of what the full set contains, several rumors regarding this set have popped up over the years. And that's all thanks to two Yahoo Japan auctions listings, both containing what appears to be a Mallow plush, which would go to this RPG set. This image is from an early 2000s Mario plush lot from Yahoo Japan auctions. At first glance, it seems to just be a standard Mario plush collector selling off their collection. However, in plain sight is Mallow. Now, there has been some debate over the authenticity of this plush. Some people believe it to just be a very accurate custom. However, customs were not very popular at this time, and it's unlikely a custom this accurate and close to the real set could be made, let alone one of Mallow. Plus, he clearly has the same gold hang string that the rest of the plushes in the set have. And another plush from the RPG set, the Mushroom, is also in this lot, making it more likely that this is a collection the seller has had collected from years of winning at arcades. Sadly, since the listing is so old, there's no way we could ever find it. 
and it's a miracle we even have this image to begin with. And that's where the story of this Mallow plush would end, if not for a second listing that went live nearly 16 years later, in May of 2016. Just like Mallow's first appearance, this too was a lot of Mario plushes. Unfortunately though, the auction was ended early, due to what I assume was a buyer messaging the seller with an extremely high offer of his own. But we have no idea who bought this lot, or where the Mallow plush is, and as such, no further pictures of Mallow were ever released from it. In fact, we don't even know how many different Mallows exist. This might be the same plush as the one from the early 2000s lot, but if there's one thing for certain, at least one of him does exist. I've scrutinized these images long enough to conclude that yeah, Mallow is an authentic plush, but is insanely rare. Which is more than we can say for the other rumored plush in this set. Since Mallow exists in this set, it's created a legacy of speculation on whether or not a plush of Geno exists as part of the RPG set as well. Let's get this straight, we have absolutely no evidence for an official RPG Geno plush existing. This is all purely rumor and speculation. Due to Mallow's absolute legendary status and how for over two decades, we've only seen him for sale a grand total of two times, it's entirely possible Takara made a Geno plush, right? Well, this argument and debate has gone on for years, both for and against his existence. While Mallow has been visually captured on two different occasions, we have no proof or even solid evidence that points towards a Geno plush existing at all. His rumored existence sort of comes from the fact that I think people want a Geno plush. Sure, pairing him with the game exclusive Mallow and Boshi would make sense in regards to the set, but to say that Geno exists because Mallow does is almost as baseless as saying Peach exists because Mario does. These plushes were most likely released in UFO catchers for a very, very limited time, and did not come with a tag or set sheet, which many other UFO plushes from around this era did have. And that's the only way we will ever get to the bottom of this mystery, and that's if an official set image was located. So to advertise new UFO catcher plush sets, manufacturers usually took what are known as set sheets to showcase all of the characters in a set. Quite a few of these have surfaced over the years, such as ones for old Sonic plush sets as well as Mario plush sets. And that Super Mario Kart set was made by Takara, proving they did take set sheets for their releases. Just recently, back in October of 2017, Twitter user at GameTanTidon posted a catalog scan showcasing the Takara Kirby's Adventure, Star Fox, and Super Mario Kart plush sets. And that is very important. When I saw these set sheets for the first time, I really wanted to know their source, thinking a Mario RPG set sheet could exist within the same pages as these images. Well, I translated the tweet and found out that these scans actually came from a series of catalogs that specialized in showing UFO prizes and arcade prizes. The RPG set came out in 1995, so all I had to do was find a 1995 issue and the set sheet would probably be there. Well unfortunately this catalog series was discontinued in 1994, and that's too early for the RPG set. But it doesn't end there. While I was unsuccessful in finding a set sheet for the RPG set, when I was browsing old import shop websites in the past, I came across a very very rare set sheet for Takara's Ocarina of Time plushes which released in 1999. So we have set sheets from pre and post RPG, but if RPG is the only set sheet we can't find, does that mean it doesn't exist? Well that's not the only Takara plush that I could think of without a known set sheet. Both Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong Country 2 plushes don't have set sheets documented, and those released between Takara plushes that we have set sheets for. So unless Takara just stopped making set sheets for a time then went back to it randomly with Ocarina of Time, I'm confident there exist set sheets of all of their plush series. But unfortunately that doesn't help us figure out if Gino is any more real than people think he is. Well like I said earlier, it can go both ways. Gino's design is very complicated compared to other patterns used for this set, and he's not as recognizable or even as Mario-esque as the other plushes. Gino's a cult character nowadays, but back then he wasn't, so the merchandise surrounding him wouldn't have been a priority. On the other hand, there is honestly so much obscure, rare, or unknown video game merchandise that has evaded all traces of existing for the longest time, or in some cases still eluding proof, that Gino could honestly be another case of this phenomenon. Just the other day, I was randomly looking for Yoshi's Island plushes, and I stumbled upon a GeoCities picture that shows 8 different colored Yoshi straps from the Yoshi's Story set. What's amazing about this picture is that the red, dark blue, black, and white Yoshis have never been seen before outside of this one image, 
and on top of that, the black and white Yoshis are prototypes from the manufacturer that this collector ended up getting a hold of. This means that not only could Gino exist as a released plush that has eluded all evidence, but also the possibility that he exists as a prototype. And you want to know what? I guess that means Mallow could also be a prototype, since we've never seen his tush tag, so we have no idea how it compares to any of the other characters in the set. Despite this, it still reconfirms Mallow as official. If we are ever to find evidence of a Gino plush existing, we'll have to look through old catalogs and advertisements from the 1995 era, or possibly get in touch with the manufacturer or someone close to them, as apparently that's not as impossible as we thought it was. Ever since I got into video game merchandise collecting, this set has without a doubt always been the most mysterious to me. It's so crazy that after all this time we still don't have concrete answers to the truth behind this set, and it's unfortunate that unless a search effort is really started for that mythical set sheet image, there's a chance that it'll remain a mystery forever. Is Mallow real? Probably, but we don't have confirmation yet, and who knows if any more plushes to this set exist. We all speculate Gino, but maybe there's a Peach or a Bowser, maybe there's even a Toad Chancellor or something, who knows? And that's the true appeal to this set. Not only are the plushes one-to-one -one with the game, a game that already has a huge fan base, but the set has an incredible mystery to it, making them extremely sought after and desired. Me personally, I'm not too bothered by not having any of these guys. Maybe eventually I'll end up getting them, but for now they're not much of a priority for me, especially since I know there are fans of the game out there that would enjoy them much more than I would. I find talking about this set's mysterious history much more interesting than the plushes themselves. They're still great but but how many examples of a lost Mario plush are there? Not many. This set is such a unique case caused by poor documentation and just general unluckiness. There's a good chance a handful of Mallows are out there. They probably just happen to fall into the hands of people who didn't care to post about them online. Maybe someone someday will stumble across this very video and find out that they have a plush that for decades has become the stuff of legend. Because think about it, this set was in UFO catchers, in arcades. Chances are a lot of these guys are in storage or destroyed because they were won by kids who at the time just saw them as another Mario toy. Imagine being the absolute legend who, while they were a kid living in Japan, went to an arcade and won a Mallow plush. It's really just a waiting game. There's only so much we can search for with finding that set image. It'll just come down to the right person at the right time, randomly stumbling across it and posting it online. But until that day comes, the Takara Super Mario RPG plush set will remain a mystery.